Artists Books in Princeton, New Jersey. Well, whether you identify yourself as a bookmaker who makes artist books or a bookmaker who makes books, if you want to talk about what you have, what you have in the show, but talk about yourself. <laughs> My name is Asha Gonsat. I, um, I, I think I do anything with art at all except for painting or printmaking. I, I'm, I'm a book artist. I would say that I'm a sculptor, a photographer, and I'd like to I'd like to take every title that I can possibly get. I, as soon as I, I was beginning to make books, as soon as I, I first started to make them, I, I had no idea what I was doing, say when I was maybe eight or nine years old, and I can't say that they were very good books at all. But um but yeah, as soon as as soon as I learned uh, the the Coptic binding, I was able to move on to making a real book, if if we can call that a real book and not what I was making before a real book, then um it just it just, I knew it was something I was never going to stop doing. This is Sue Gozen, and I would say that I'm really a publisher of uh, books that are a combination of um, fine literature and uh, original um, etchings or photographs, things like that, that are in traditional bindings. Uh, my background is also in paper movies and started a business in New York City, which continues to this day, yay. Um, it's about 35 years old, it's a paper making business. So a lot of the work that we do, that I do personally, is um, uh, I make fine papers that are very um, gorgeous to feel and look at uh, for fine books. I'm Chuck Miley, and my training is as a painter printmaker. My moving into the book area I owe to Carol Barton, if you're familiar with Carol Barton, who's a movable book artist, and to uh, my fellow artists at the Book Arts Roundtable of New Jersey, situated in South Orange, which several friends are here today. Uh, because I see myself more as a problem solver and like that little kid playing in storytelling. So in some cases the stories are my own and others, as with the ones in the show, I've borrowed from other authors, either as with uh, the Shock and Peter piece, you know, or Peter Pan or whatever, but have written some of my own. Uh, I, I say I like to solve problems, and I like to, as, as a collaborator and I came up with, I like to unname things. Uh, unnaming things meaning you take an object out of context and you introduce it into uh, an alien environment, such as a book or a sculpture or a form, you no longer recognize it, say, as a coffee bean, all of a sudden it becomes something different. And therein lies the delight of the person that see my, my form, sometimes book forms, as with the one piece down on the thing, is paying a homage to the Japanese screen, paying an homage to the stained glass window, so borrowing, stealing wherever I can uh, to put these together. Process is really important to me. Uh, in my advanced age, I've come to the conclusion to pay attention to what my instructors had said in undergraduate school, and I have become a, a diligent sketchbook keeper. And uh, several, several of my friends took me aside not too long ago and said, you know, you need to develop sketchbooks that are on the accordion form that can fold out completely, not attached to the back cover, because they really liked what I do with drawings. And they said, this should be part of your exhibition when you ex exhibit your books, whether they be pop-up books, movable books, or three-dimensional form, the sketches, that process is just as important and should be out there for the viewer or the reader or uh, he who is getting the story told to him uh, as part of that process. So that's where I am. The other really wonderful thing that I'm learning is as I get older, I like to play more. I get excited about things. Uh, you know, really involved, and uh, even when they fail miserably, I find myself coming back on the spiral and re revisiting them at some future date. My name is Karen Guanchone, and I usually do big installations. I always make books, though. Um, I kind of think of myself as a circus act, because there really is no media that I don't like to use, and I tend to combine it a lot. A lot of times there's, you know, music, dance, audience participation, community art projects involved, and you know, printmaking, paper, sculpture, video, everything's part of it. So I never think of it separately. But the books have always been there. I think the first one I made was when I was about seven, traveling through the <laughs> country. My mother was sitting there. And um, from that point on, I've never stopped. I've lived in a lot of different places and 
worked in a lot of different places all around the world. And I, even if I didn't have a studio, I'd always have a book. And even if I was, you know, driving it around like a bag woman, there was always this ongoing book. And that process just never ends. So now there's hundreds and hundreds of them. Sometimes they accompany an installation. Sometimes they come before, maybe 20 years before, and inspire an installation later. But they're probably the one constant. So I, even though I hate to have a title, I think I want to do what Asha does and take them all. Um, books are always present, so I love them. I'm Lois Morrison. And I was thinking when I saw the Vitslava Simborska, I think I pronounced that badly, uh, poem downstairs, that she wrote in her Nobel Prize speech that she did not like the title poet, that it really made her very, very uneasy to be called a poet. And I'm that way with the word artist. I find that I like the idea of thief. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm really a thief, and I, I enjoy that aspect of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Rick Black, and uh, actually I, I come to the book arts from uh, journalism, and Yehuda uh, Amafai, an Israeli poet, told me once that uh, just don't call yourself a poet, whatever you do. <laughs> so similar advice, but uh, I came to the book arts uh, by chance about ten years ago when I happened upon the uh, Center for Book Arts in New York City and fell in love with the place and started taking all kinds of classes uh, and started my own publishing company about five years ago. And I guess I would consider myself a writer who makes artistic books. Um, and I continue to be torn between uh, having been a journalist and written for large audiences. I, I continue to be torn between making books in a very limited edition that very few people are actually going to see and making uh, trade additions that would reach a, a wider audience. I'm Sarah Stengel, and I started out as a metalsmith, <clears throat> and I began doing these sequential drawings, and people would come around and say, those would make a really good book, and I would say, no, 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 you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And then I made my first book, and I think I gave myself four months and $1,000, and I think it took me a year and $4,000, I letterpress printed it, I bought the wrong paper, I um, didn't know what I was doing, I didn't make my dummy first. I had there were, there were so many problems with that book that when I was done with it, I swore I would never make another one. And then I got to my students, like, I'll just make this one little book and then I'll get back to my real work. And sometimes I still feel that way. There is no such thing as a small book project. Um, they're all huge. They grow. I still do sculpture, I still do drawing, but I only do uh, work on one book at a time. Sometimes they are, are born quickly, as in the case of Coffee Rings, which some of you may know. Um, the book I'm working on now is taking me three years, and I'll probably be three and a half by the, the time it's done. I'm Marsha Wilson. I'm a 73-year-old housewife masquerading as a fool. <laughs> I, uh, I make books to get attention. I uh, try not to be boring. I've made a book called uh, Grandmother's Musical Talent about a farting grandmother. I My nephew loved it. I <laughs> wrote a book on every man I ever slept with called Do Not Open Until I After I Am Dead. <laughs> and in this show I have Growing Up Neurotic where I, it's sort of a mommy dearest book about my parents that I wrote before I had lost all my hormones. Now I'm a little more sympathetic towards them. <laughs> And uh, I just told you I never take myself seriously, and uh, I try and have a good time. That's the end. Okay. <laughs> and that's the end. Thanks for listening.